Picture a lamp with a lampshade similar to this. We know there is most likely a light bulb screwed into the lamp, hidden underneath the lampshade, but we can't see it. However, if we turn on the lamp, the light comes on. This is just a small lamp with a little light bulb, yet it creates a light that could be seen for miles in the darkness. This lamp represents each of us. We each have a light inside us that is only lit by following Jesus Christ. And when we truly let that light shine, we spread the love of God throughout the world. In Mark 4, 21 through 25, we read, He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Many of you, like me, are now thinking of the song that we learned as children. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. As followers of Christ, letting our light shine means many things. We are filled with God's light, God's grace, God's love, and God's generosity. And we are to shine in the world, sharing God's grace, love, and generosity. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, we read, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In these verses, from both Mark and Matthew, four statements grab my attention. Let anyone with ears to hear listen, Pay attention to what you hear. You are the light. And shine so that they may see your good works and give glory to God. Now, I don't mean we should shine and do works in an egotistical way, as if to say, hey, look at me, look what I did. But to shine so that when another looks at us, they think, I want what she has. I want that light inside of me. I want that spark that only comes from Jesus. Have you ever noticed that light, regardless of its lumens, has a softness that draws us in? We may want to cover our eyes in the brightness of the sun, but we welcome the comforting warmth on our skin. That's how it can feel to receive another's grace and generosity. When someone shows us grace or is generous with us, we see God's light in them, and we feel the warmth that draws us in. Can you imagine a world where everyone shines for Christ, where everyone offers grace to everyone, where everyone is freely generous with everyone? We would certainly look like that city on a hill referred to in Matthew. And for those who haven't received the knowledge of this light, that don't know the love of God, that don't know what Jesus did for them, they would look up that hill and say, I want to be there. Several years ago, I was a single mother of three, home mortgage, car payment, etc., etc. We went through some really tough times. I received God's grace through the generosity of others many times during those years. And I promised God that when able, I would seek out those I could help and that I would be generous. I've missed the boat a few times and have had to work through the guilt of that. 
But God is a merciful God who offers us unconditional love and grace. I am far from perfect. I often have to regenerate that light inside me. Our world can be cold. It's far too easy to get sucked in and be selfish. But I want to be the kind of disciple that not only shines my light, but to be the kind of disciple that doesn't just stay on that hill with all the other lights, but to go down the hill and invite others to find their lights and to invite them to join in sharing God's grace and generosity with and for all.